then you better take a deep breath with me and release all else. Let's do it together. Breathe in and breathe out. We're preparing for that wonderful awakening, a spiritual dynamite that helps to take our faith to a new level that's explosive. Wouldn't you love to have that kind of faith that looks to any kind of obstacle and it blows it away, removes every mountain, makes every valley smooth, makes the pathway that may have seemed crooked straight. As the scriptures invited us to travel this wonderful journey together, well, it's one of a dynamite truth, a truth that can help to shape and help to mold a faith that does just that and accomplishes the goals that you so desire in your life. Are you ready for some spiritual truth, a dynamite truth that is, it creates an explosive faith? Well, here it is. It's simply this. One day, someone was asking me, Pastor, would you pray for me? And I said, sure, yes. I'm holding you in consciousness. What? I said, pray for me. I said, yes, I'm holding you in consciousness. No, I, I said, pray for me. You see, the person wasn't quite understanding holding in consciousness. Maybe that's a phrase that we're not that familiar with and may not understand the spiritual truth that's spoken over and over again throughout our scriptures about the principle of holding in consciousness. And let's break that down. How many of you really know what it's like to hold or to be held? We know it's that wonderful security. When my newborn son was handed to me, the nurse, first thing she said to me is, do you know how to hold do you know how to hold a baby? You know, like, what? what? You know, did I look like I was going to drop my newborn son? But <laughs> I said, of course I know how to hold. And you see, I grabbed as a father's love, embracing that baby, holding close to my heart, holding close to my very being, that newborn life. I held it with such security and such joy and exuberance that a newborn father would have, a new father would have of a newborn, a father would have of his baby, uh, of his child, and to, to welcome this wonderful experience for the first time of holding that which you've anticipated and believed for for so long is now your reality. Of course, I know how to hold. And I held that son, that boy, that child. I held my son with such strength and visualization, seeing this is my boy, and great things are about to unfold. I saw in that moment his future, and with great anticipation, I began to visualize all that was going to be unfolding for the years ahead. In that moment, I saw him as that doctor, that lawyer, that whatever it may be. I saw him that president of the United States. I saw him as that great leader, and it came about in whatever shape or form, but I began to visualize and hold in my consciousness, in my thought, in my awareness, this is my son, and I love him. That's how you hold. You see, holding really is this wonderful picturing. It's this keeping this in mind, this visualizing, this seeing. In a spiritual realm, when we hold something in mind or hold it in thought, we picture it. We know what it looks like. We know what it feels like. We sort of visualize this together. Let's do this. Let's take a little exercise where we begin to hold something in our consciousness, hold it in our thoughts. I want you to hold in mind, in thought, and in awareness, God is good, and we say all the time, and this is the time God is good right now, right now. So we're going to hold in consciousness this very thought, and if you find it comfortable, close your eyes or just relax for a moment. I want you to do this with me. I'm going to ask you to, what does it feel like to know that God is good all the time? What do you feel? What emotion rises? What's coming up within you? God is good, and this goodness is here right now. What does that feel like? Begin to picture what it looks like. Flash those images in your mind of the goodness of God. What it feels like, what it looks like. What are the vibrations that you're feeling within your very being of knowing this love, this grace, this mercy, this compassion? this great forgiveness, this infinite wisdom and knowledge. What does it feel like? What does it look like? Now hold that securely as we come back into this room and open your eyes and think for a moment. You see, you held a picture in mind. You held it. 
And we hope that you held it like a newborn thought or a newborn child or as I held my newborn son. You held it close to your bosom. You held it close to your very being. You held it close to your heart. This you held securely. And that's what we do. We hold in this manner in consciousness the very goodness of God. This scripture, it, uh, throughout the scripture, teaches us this powerful truth that it's so important that we never, ever let go of the goodness of God or the consciousness of this. Never let all these other things come into our thought process. Never allow things that might bring, bring, begin to bring forth a limited consciousness or an idea of lack in any way whatsoever. In fact, it's so powerful that in one of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not have any graven image or create any graven image of God in any way whatsoever. Why? What is it saying? It's not about saying that we shouldn't carve things out of stone. It's about having an image of God that's stuck, firmed, in such a way that it's limited. Quite often, we may picture God in limited ways, and then thus we live out a spirituality that evokes a limitation and a lack. So many people say, well, I see God is this way. I see God is that way. And I've been holding on to these images for so long. I've been taught in Sunday school, this wonderful white man with a gray beard sitting on a throne off in the distance amongst the clouds, somehow removed and away from me, looking down, ready to punish. You see, we have these images that hold in limitation our spiritual growth and development. The passage in that Ten Commandments was inviting you to break or shatter those stuck, formed, limited images that are solid, that seem to be immovable and not fluid. Because let me tell you this, when we know God, we know God by God's character. God's character, meaning that wonderful, ever-present, all-knowing, all-powerful characteristic and nature of God. When we know that, that's how we truly experience God in the knowing. And when we do, we understand that that is the all-good. And good is ever fluid. It's ever flowing. It's not limited in any way. Good doesn't say, well, it's only here that you would receive it, and this is all you get. But good is bounty. It is abundance. It's blessing unlimited for us. So our consciousness has to shift to understanding that this powerful truth, holding in consciousness, is holding in consciousness, awareness, in mind. God is good right now, all the time always will be, and always is. So when we image that, we understand how powerful this is when we read this text we read today. Thou will keep him or her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Stayed on the oh, oh, oh. We talked about it last week. We've talked about it in our classes. We're going over and over again. We want to make sure you embrace this very understanding. Oh, oh, oh. God is oh, oh, oh. What is it? Omnipresent omniscient, omnipotent, those three O's. If we can get those down, you know God. You know the very character of God. You know the nature of God. If you can embrace those fully to the full extent, you understand exactly who and what God is. Ever present, ever knowing, full of the infinite knowledge and wisdom and all powerful at every moment at all times. So we want to hold in consciousness a way of thinking, a mind that stayed firmed on these things. You're invited to hold these things in consciousness in a way that you're saying, I am holding in place. Nothing is going to move. Nothing's shifting or shaking. My dog, Bailey, beautiful golden doodle, 80 pounds of strength and might, especially when he sees a car going by and I'm walking the dog. Suddenly, whoosh, lunge, there he goes, leash pulling tight, me dragging behind. The concept of staying has to be reinforced, meaning stay means stay in one place. Stay means hold on. Stay means don't move. Stay means be immovable. Stay means when cars come by and distractions come your way, you don't pay any attention to them. You just stay, stay, stay. Well, this is the invitation. When your mind is stayed, in this wonderful awareness, immovable, unshakable, but always continuing in this thought, you're in this wonderful place that nothing can rob you, nothing can disturb you, nothing can uh, rip it away from you. The goodness of God is with you here now in this moment, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing. 
You see, quite often we allow all things to come into our way that may distract. How do we keep ourselves stayed, our mind focused, our clarity of thought, our consciousness held in one place? Powerful meditation is what's so crucial for our lives. Learning the journey of meditating and embracing what that is. Like, wait a minute, do Christian churches meditate? People say, well, isn't that kind of an Eastern thing? Isn't that something that maybe someone from another religion might do? Do we meditate? Oh, of course. Scripture has invited us on this wonderful journey that's often overlooked by so many spiritual traditions and thinking that we don't meditate because we don't want to sit in silence. We think our, God, our whole work is to storm the gates of heaven. We need to shout. We need to scream. We need to holler because why? God must be asleep in our consciousness and our thinking and our awareness. We think we not uh, jump up and down and shake a tambourine because we got to wake God up somehow because we're thinking God is not listening or pay attention. We think we need to beseech because we think God is withholding. And we know none of this is true as we look to the teaching of Scripture unfolding for us in our lives. So it is in the power of meditation that we understand a spiritual principle found in Matthew chapter 22 is the word is shared to us in this gospel lesson. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if thy eye be single, meaning not distracted or divided, the whole body shall be full of light. The eye in that Eastern tradition was that space here of consciousness of thought, that centered space right here that needed to be as the scripture invites us, single. Doesn't mean it's, that simply means it's not married to anything else. Boom, boom. It simply means it's single in the sense it's got one focus, one thing real clear here. It knows the truth and holds on to the truth and allows nothing else to distract it or to remove it. So it is that this spot must be opened, our consciousness, our mind opened in such a way to achieve this powerful enlightenment within our journey to be filled with light that comes into our lives. To be mindful, to be aware is truly to say, I am not distracted, I am powerfully zeroed in on this truth that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know God is good in this moment. And no matter what this moment looks like, no matter what's going on, the goodness of God is present here. After all, we understand is Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above. Not on earthly things, but things of a higher consciousness, of a higher awareness. When we set ourselves there, we know that we will be in perfect peace because our mind is stayed, set, rested, calm, at peace, not troubled in any way, single-minded. We look at this passage of Jesus uh, and his... Uh, journey of his prayer life we find so many instances and examples where jesus went away removed himself from the multitudes he went away to the mountain he went to the place of higher consciousness symbolized by that elevated place he went to a place where he found himself to be alone to encounter that single-mindedness that enlightenment to come to him people would say well wait a minute jesus went away to pray well, what do you think he prayed do you think he prayed prayers like, God, help me? Do you think he prayed prayers because I'm, I'm feeling all alone and I'm, I'm abandoned and I don't feel your presence? Do you think he said prayers that said, God, I, I feel like you're withholding? I don't believe that Jesus prayed any of those kind of prayers because the knowledge and the truth he speaks of speaks of his oneness in such a powerful way that he was always working on holding in consciousness the truth that God is good. Now, quite often, we can realize that when we lose that consciousness, it's because we're simply distracted. Jesus went away to regain, to refocus, to put his mind in, in the journey of a clarity of knowing and understanding this truth. And quite often in our world today of chaos, we've got to spend some time getting away to meditate, to be in stillness, to be in silence, to listen to God. Because this is really what it's all about. When we're in that time of meditation, we release our mind chatter. We let go of our thoughts that are running like crazy going through our mind. We release them all to allow this wonderful opportunity to listen. Let me tell you, there's a whole lot of peace that comes to our hearts and minds when we simply listen versus when we're always talk, 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 talk. You know, we're always going to God. God, I need this. God, I need that. God, I need that. Just be still. 
And we don't understand the power of that presence and that very phrase, be still, be, just be, be in that quiet, be in that stillness, be in that place where you're now, your spirit is open to listening to the very voice and essence of God. He prayed in such a way that would really allow all distractions to be removed in that meditation presence, in that wonderful consciousness that every distraction that comes against us, and oh, do we have them. How many times have you gone to say, today's my moment of prayer, I'm getting up early, I'm gonna have this wonderful time, of meditation and silence with God, and a thousand one distractions come your way. A thousand one things pull you away. Thoughts are going like crazy at you. You're being bombarded. You're, the cares of the day. Facebook pops up. The news comes on. And before you know it, you've lost that time completely. And you've lost that focus. And what slipped away from your consciousness and your awareness is the very truth that God is good right here, right now, in this moment. Jesus worked on picturing, shall we say, seeing the all good, removing those thoughts. In fact, we find the illustration of Jesus in his time in the wilderness of saying, Satan, get thee behind me. In other words, here's a word picture because we don't believe that Satan is an actual being. It's the adversarial thoughts that come to us is what the scripture has always been describing for us. We understand that it's that adversary, that which is working against us. So Jesus is simply saying, I picture those adversarial thoughts behind me. I picture them behind me. I visualize, I feel. You are now behind me, out of sight, out of mind. Don't you love that? When we think about it, when it's out of our sight, our spiritualized sight, it's also out of our mind, out of our consciousness. So we find here this, the power for our, our lives is that we know that when we meditate on things, when we meditate on these things, the things of God, the goodness of God, Scripture says in 1 Timothy 4, 4.15, meditate on these things, give thyself wholly to them that, thy, that you may profit from all essence of it. The kingdom of God is within you from Luke chapter 7. Know ye not, ye are the temple of the Spirit of God and it dwells within you. We go within that which dwells within, and we there in silence, we hold dearly in consciousness the truth. God is good right here and now. You see, that's the big transition for our lives because the question we're asking is, what are you really aware of? What goes through your mind? What are you conscious of? What do you think about every single day? Because if your first and foremost thought is, God is good in this moment. And you're at the doctor and the doctor gives you some diagnosis that may not always be what you wanted to hear. You know in consciousness God is good all the time. Maybe you're going to work and there's some things that come and happen at the work in your dialogue with coworkers or your boss or whatever. But in consciousness, number one, you hold the very thought, God is good right now, right here. Maybe you're going through some challenges in your relationships, but you know that you hold in consciousness the very truth, this very thought, God is good all the time. And this is the time God is good. And I experience it to the fullness. We know that there were times in scripture illustrated for us as we look to our own lives of disciples who did not hold in consciousness this very truth. And when they went to pray for others, seeing to manifest the miraculous, they troubled and they feared and they wondered and they turned to Jesus, help us. In the midst of the storms out in the Sea of Galilee, the ship was being tossed to and fro and they're for not holding in consciousness the goodness of God. They're turning in fear to Jesus, help us, calm the storm. We see it over and over again, those who have let it slip away. For to hold is saying, I will not let it go. I will not let it go. Releasing is letting it go. Holding is saying it's secure. It's here. It's deep within me at all times. I hold it close. Those who did saw the abundance and the manifestation of great things. We refer to the Old Testament story of the children of Israel coming to the walls of Jericho. And as they began to march around the walls, holding in consciousness the miraculous about to 
transpire every day marching around the walls and the beautiful symbolism in the last day marching seven times around those walls. Seven meaning the number of completion or perfectness, that number of wholeness, completely aware of the good of God about to transpire. And as they completed that seventh round, they pull out the trumpets, sounded the noise of the trumpets and began to shout and the walls fell down. You see, when we live in this kind of consciousness and hold it, we may face all kinds of barriers in life. We may face all kinds of obstacles, but we're holding in consciousness and we're holding it completely as if we are marching seven times around any obstacle, any barrier, any issue, any challenge that we have in our lives. And we know that God is good. So we shout the sounds. We celebrate the joy of knowing that God is good in this moment. And everything begins to crumble, fall dissipate, move away, challenges removed, mountains, obstacles taken away from our lives. So it is that we understand that those who embrace this teaching saw the miraculous. And when we do the same, it's dynamite for our faith because we know that what's the obstacle? My faith says, uh -uh, God is good all the time. Right now, right here, this is the goodness of God. This moment is filled with the goodness of God. Everything else around us may want to say or whisper or try to distract us from that truth, but we hold in consciousness. So when we pray for someone, when we say that phrase, I'm holding you in consciousness, it simply means I'm holding the very thought of your highest and best, that you are perfect, complete, good. The goodness of God is all around you, in you, and through you. And that's the begin where we begin to see faith that's powerful, that's mountain moving, that's, that addresses every challenge with a dynamite explosion that says, I see the challenge. I, I don't see the challenge, excuse me. I see the good in this moment. And I hold you in that mind picture. You are healed right now. You are well right now. You are prosperous right now. You are successful right now. You are walking in complete blessing right now because I hold you in this awareness, this consciousness of this truth right here and now. And that is my prayer. I need not say anything more. I don't need to beseech heaven. I don't need to storm the gates. I don't need to cry. I don't need to petition. I need to stand up all night in 24-hour prayer vigils. I don't need to walk in pace. I don't need to do labyrinths. I don't need to do all those kind of things, not to say that those may not be good. I'm just saying I hold in consciousness, and the power of knowing this truth is at work in your moment, in your now, in your here, in your challenge, in whatever your need may be. So I invite you to do something very special. Hold your highest and best in consciousness this week. Hold it. Hold it knowing my highest and best is there because the all good is happening at all times and it's happening right now and it's unfolding for me right now. And then when you turn to someone else, Say, I hold you in consciousness, in the full awareness that something amazing is happening in, right, in you right now, healing and strength and blessing, goodness unfolding for you. It's already there. I hold you in the all good. That's my prayer. I need not say anything more than that's the way I visualize, that's the way I see, that's what I picture, that's what I feel, that's what I embrace all about you. So I invite you to this powerful journey of dynamite faith that's explosive, that transforms the world around us. I want you to join with me in this phrase you'll find on the screen. Let's say it together and let this be our prayer. Let this be our consciousness. Say it with me, would you? I am seeing, visualizing, and feeling the all good. I am holding you in consciousness. I see your highest and best your healing, your blessings, your prosperity, and your success, and so it is. How powerful that is. Let us hold one another in consciousness. Amen.